In this quick lesson, I'm going to show you how to use this Artistic tab from the Text Tools in the Design Center. Now it's important to understand that you need to have the text selected for the Artistic tab to actually be there. So you can see when I click off it, it goes, and when I click back on it, the Artistic tab comes back up. So that's how that works. Okay, so here we've got some artistic text. This text isn't constrained by its boundaries. It's just basically plain text that's just been carriage returned. And as you can see, when I size and stretch it, it just changes its size by the amount I've stretched or resized it by, unlike a text box, which uh, stays within the boundaries of the text. In other words, the text doesn't change itself. It doesn't stretch, but here it does because it's artistic text. So I'll talk to you about here about this advanced line spacing. You can see when I click on this button here, it expands out this line spacing. So the space between the lines actually increases or decreases. And in fact, I can decrease it right down and I can actually start overlapping the text, as you can see here. I can set it back to 100%. Now, obviously, there's a direct relationship between line space as a absolute measurement or as a percentage. They work uh, together, as you can see here. So that's how you can adjust the line spacing generically across the entire block of artistic text. You may want to actually adjust a particular line like this one here and I can adjust that out and you can see that the uh, that line there, the space between these two are increasing but nothing else. That's great if you want to actually lay out something uh, quite complex with uh, a whole different bunch of line spaces. I've just created this dimension here just to show you that that's the 5 inch measurement we're referring to. I'll just click this back into artistic text, I'll click the tab. And you can see it's 5 inches here. So that's the space that we've got between these two lines. It's actually 5 inches. So that's how that works. And the current position there is from the top down to the, uh, or from the top of the, the text down to the top of that line. So that's how those uh, line spacing tools work. And that's a great way of laying out uh, things like monumental masonry, etc. You can really um, adjust the settings that you need to work with the line spaces quite specifically. Okay, now I'm going to talk about copy and paste font styles. This idea here is, is that you can actually copy a font style. So for example if I make this say Impact, which is quite a different uh, font to say the other font here which is Times New Roman, I can actually copy this style. So I can click this button here and it actually copies that style of the font to the clipboard. So if I select this here and I change that to say apply text, click this button here, you'll see that it'll actually apply that style impact to that text. So now that becomes impact. And I can do this to here as well. So it's not actually copying the text, it's copying the font. Okay? So when you apply it, it only changes the font, not the actual text. It's not like copy and paste. It's copying the font style and then applying it. Okay, the other thing you can do is you can actually select whatever fonts you've got in a block of text. So here it's selecting all the impact. Now I've selected Times New Roman and as you can see it's now selected all the Times New Roman. That's a great way of being able to select large slabs of text by their actual font. And that means you can, uh, you can change lots of text in one, in one set, in one uh, click. You don't have to go and select it all independently. So now I'll copy this style here and I'll apply it to here just to make this point here. So I'll apply that text and you can see now it's bold italic. So I can select that style as well. You can see how it's selecting the style of the font. So it's actually selecting bold italic. When I select that there, it's actually selecting it by the font. Now you can see it's selected all the times New Roman, even though some is bold italic and some is not. So when you've got uh, text that you want to select it by the actual style, bold italic, etc., you can use those tools. And that's a very good way of selecting large slabs of text very quickly and then applying changes to that, that uh, text you've selected. So you might want to make everything red or bold or italic, you can do that. Okay, now I'm going to talk about these actions here. So here, if we click this button here, this uh, artistic text will be transformed into a text box. If I click on this button here, I get this auto numbering and serialization window pop up, which has its own help file, which you can watch later on. That's for doing automatic numbering. Now here I'm going to show you how to break by lines. You can see here by clicking this button with the text selected, I actually get the lines breaking apart. So now this has been separated all into lines rather than a, a, a slab of artistic text. I'll just undo that quickly. And you can do the same with words. You can break your words apart. So click this button here. Yep. 
and you can see how the words are now separated. So each individual word is now separate. It's a good way of breaking that down. Now I can also do it down to the character or the glyph. So I can break by glyph. So you can see here when I click this button, the whole lot of the every single glyph has been broken apart. And then I can obviously go and select that. So that's how those tools work. Um, very good for laying out your artwork and uh, you should use these tools when you need to. And that's the end of this lesson. Thank you.